In today's video, I wanna walk you through our Facebook ad ramp up process for a new client that came in the agency, very small brand, literally zero ad experience in the past, nothing, new pixel, new ad account, new everything. So I wanna walk you through how we ramp that ad account up from literally zero results on day one to over 2.5x ROAS at the end of month two. My name is Justin and I'm the founder of Voizel Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. So let's get into it. This was the first month that the client, we actually ran ads for, um, I'm saying first month, we did not run ads by the way for the full month of September. I'm just putting all the dates for September. It was actually more half way through September that we ran the ads or actually a little bit more, if I'm not mistaken, very, very little ad spend. We also were met with um, ad spending restrictions on that account because again, it was a brand new account, new pixel, new accounts, new, pretty much new business when it comes to advertising. So it was not that much, honestly, that we could look at in the past, no data besides what we could look at on Shopify. So what I wanna walk you through is the ramp up process. Like how do you actually start a new ad account? And the reason why I'm recording this video is not because, hey, this is something that could be of a potential help to our current clients, but it's because if you're watching this video, you are probably in the beginning stages of advertising with a new business or new account on Facebook. So meaning that in a couple of months, a couple of years, maybe you would have actually watched these videos, subscribed to the channel, and it took some value from our e-commerce marketing tips and potentially, hey, who knows, we might end up working together in the future. With that said, looking at this, what we had, as you can see in month uh, one, or I'm saying the first two or three weeks, it was pretty much all cold because again, there was no retargeting to do at all. It was literally all cold, um, very little retargeting here. Cold campaign did horrendous, 0.6 ROAS. Let's take a look at that campaign and let's take a look at the way we broke it down. So as you can see, there were lots of ad sets within that. So what I first wanna say is we were doing two types of testing at the same time for that client as it was a new client's when it came to advertising. The first testing was product testing. They never ran ads for any of their products or any of their collections. And all we could base ourselves on is the selling data from Shopify. So what products usually sell well at this time of the year, what Google Analytics also tells us based on their markets, um, what states in the US actually worked better for that client, or the interest, everything was based off Google Analytics and Shopify data. So the first couple of weeks was testing, first of all, the products, and the second of all, the audiences. So we actually kind of did both at the same time because budget was very limited as this was a super, super small client. It's usually rare that we take on these clients, but they actually came to us and we actually worked with a very similar brand in the past, same niche. So we thought, why not try to help them scale? So. With that said, initially, as you can see, it was all about creating different audiences. We had, I mean, 22 ad sets, as you can see from there, just within these first couple of weeks, just testing a bunch of audiences, seeing what hit, what did not. I mean, we could see right here the Texas sports in caps would work great. Um, that was definitely our best audience. And then as you can see from the rest, you know, we had a lot of ads spent on this uh, American culture, you know, Texas audience, nothing. A lot of those had literally no conversions, um, very little at the cards, if none, and very little landing page views. And if I show you October as a whole, which it, very, it literally started picking up towards the end of October. But if you look October as a whole, first of all, you can see there was a lot more ad spend. So 2,500 instead of 600 bucks. 3,500 back in returns. Again, you might be seeing this 1.42 is not good. I know, right? Expectations are set. Whenever we have a new brand like that, we let them know, hey, you're probably not gonna get good results for a very long time, especially for the first three months because we're like, we've got nothing to base ourselves on. We got no data, no nothing. You're barely making any revenue. So we have to work with a very small budget and hope to make it work. So with that said, in this case, you can see that's, uh, first of all, we started cracking the code a little bit on that campaign. So if I go back on that first cold campaign that we had, and let me put the ROAS from highest to lowest. Um, if you actually look at the ad spend right here, one of the uh, kind of highest ad spend for best ROAS would have been that one, Texas Sports Gap, which again, worked great in month one, but it was still not good enough. It was about a 1.4. I mean, that one was doing 2.48, which is actually above the client's break even point. So luckily not doing too shabby on those. So again, 1.2. 26, not doing so bad. So initial phase for us was product testing and ad set testing. You can see that 
What we did initially was on the product testing part of things. We had sports cap, just caps. They also had different collections within their caps. So we shot a lot of different things. We kind of started to narrow it down to two to three types of products that worked great. And then it was all about keeping to test the audiences, right? You could still see that during October, the audience that we found working. So again, it's Texas one that we found working with in September. We kept it up and running, but we had to kill it at some point. And take a look at this, the last seven days, things finally started popping off. Again, we're still out of Black Friday. There's literally no promotion, no offer on these products. So it's very hard to actually get conversions where you don't really have a compelling offer. But in this case, finally cracked the code 2.75 X ROAS over the last seven days, just on our cold campaign. So no retargeting done. And guess what? Texas, which we saw a recurring team, Texas, with all the different styles of interest based audiences that we tried, Texas was what was working great. So when you do your ad testing, you also want to make sure that you test specific states. That's also something I see. Uh, I know a lot of you guys watching actually based in the US, so this might be relevant to you. It would be the same thing if you're from Canada, uh, if you're from Europe or other regions in the world, then you might also be able to do that at a local level. But always test states. There are states, provinces, regions that work best than others. The whole country, Facebook might spend a lot of your budget on various states. Might spend your budget on an audience that is not really keen on purchasing, but Texas actually worked somewhat good on month one for that client. Again, nothing too great, but better than any other audiences. It was still by far the best in month two. And now very early month three, we could actually see that things are going pretty well still for Texans. And as you can see, those are new audiences that we just began started testing. So when you do your testing process, when you do your audiences, you always just kind of want to narrow it down and then remove as many variables from the process. So the first thing we did was state testing. So we found that Texas actually worked pretty good. So again, we did not create, we did not choose states out of nowhere. We looked at Google Analytics. We chose some of the top states that they already had. And then Texas came out on top when it came to the ad. Okay, Texas is working well. Now, what demographic worked best? Oh, I mean, it was clearly men. From the start, we knew men would probably be the ones that bought these products more. So then the other thing would be, do we leave it as broad? Or so basically all Texans to see the ads, or do we actually try and narrow it down? We tried broad, we've also tried narrow. We've tried many different style of narrow audiences. So basketball, baseball, uh, baseball cap, football, streetwear. We tried a lot of stuff within Texas. And at the end of the day, we tried outerwear and snapback targeting work again, as you can see, 4X ROAS on one, 3.53 on the other one, they're more than half of the ad spend. So I'm actually positive that if we actually turned off the remaining two audiences, we could actually get an even better ROAS. Now, the thing is, we also don't wanna be selling only to Texas. We do wanna be America wide. So we kind of have to go and try and find other states that could also convert well. You can see that actually Colorado is not doing too bad. 1.85 is still above break even point. California though is not doing great at the moment. So we're probably gonna end up turning that one off soon. And you know, you might be sitting there watching this 2.75 is not really a holy grail, but when you have, again, like I, I, I can't stress this enough, a blank canvas, new brand, they're making, you know, barely making $10,000 a month from, from any of the online revenue that they're making, 10 to $20,000 a month at max. So there's very little proof of concept right here. They don't have that many reviews. They don't really have a good offer. So product market fit has not really been tested. What you can actually focus on at first is pulling the right levers. So you need to figure out what is your right account structure. As much as I'm talking about in recent videos where I'm talking a lot about creative is king, you need to focus just on creative, forget about media buying. That is true for most of the clients that we work with, which are thriving brands. Like they don't really need to do product testing. They don't really need to actually do some of these audience testing. They just need to go creative and copy combination. When you're starting from scratch, you don't know nothing about ads. You are on a blank canvas. I'd say you need to figure out account structure and data first. And this is what was done for that client. It was first, as mentioned, it was an audience testing, seeing what audiences work better. And that you might not be able to deem purchases as your event at that point. It might just be landing page views, right? Who actually clicks the most on your ads? Ideally, you wanna get some form of higher level events such as at the carts in our case, which we actually kept a close eye on at the beginning. You can clearly see that from the at the carts to a checkout ratio to then purchases, there clearly is a drop right here. So you, we already know that the website is not the most optimized, which is things that we have to work with with smaller brands. But with that said, looking at that client was audience testing, then narrowing down our audience testing process, then we begin product testing. And then from there right now, we're at a phase where we're getting into the creative testing part. So at the end of month two, begin creative testing a little bit more heavily now, and it's gonna be more of that moving forward as I've been talking in other videos. So to summarize everything, first thing you wanna do is audience testing. 
Second thing you wanna do is product testing, or you could actually interchange those depending on the state of the business. You could do product testing first and audience testing second. We actually just flipped it for that specific case is we already had a client again in that specific niche. So we had our hypothesis about audiences. And then finally, it's about your creative testing process, which at some point it's all you're gonna be working on for the remaining months and years of your advertising career. I invite you now to join our free Facebook group link in the description down below. We've actually post value almost every single day on that group. You're one of the first to know about our new videos. We might even poll you on upcoming video ideas and we welcome any and all questions from viewers on there. We actually get um, sometimes zero questions, uh, ad account optimizing questions, and I do my best to respond to everybody in the group. So make sure to join that group. And on that note, also check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.